Getting close, getting close, huh? Nice. It's sharpening time. Let's take it over to the whetstone and put a proper edge on this chisel. So getting the proper angle on a chisel is really important. So to, as a guide, I've used my timber framing chisel and using my jack clamp there, I've set it at a distance where I can get that perfect angle by wrestling it across these two points. I bet you jack clamp guys haven't thought about this application here. And so I've got that set there and I can change that simply by moving this back and forth, but we don't want to freehand this, it's too hard. So I've got this set perfectly now and we'll just grind this right to the proper angle using a whetstone. The whetstone is the best way to sharpen tools because it doesn't produce any heat. It runs in a bath of water and it runs at a relatively slow RPM and doesn't damage the uh, edges on tools. It's the best way to go. So this last bit, we'll just finish the back of it by hand with a thousand grit stone, knock off that wire. Only one thing remaining to do, yeah, you guessed it, boiled linseed oil. Of course, boiled linseed oil, my favorite part. Let's put a little of that on there, and man, this is going to be nice. Whew. Sure we get it all coated real good, a bunch of it in there. All right, let's see how it looks. So what do you think? How do you think that turned out? How does that handle look? Isn't that nice? The proportions are just, it's beautiful. The shoulder right there left a little bit back on the shoulder. That way there's room to grow. If this wood shrinks a little bit on that socket end, you know, I've got just a tiny little bit. I can knock that back there and, and keep wedging that in there a little bit. So that's what's why that is. Here you can see the, the Simon's name. You know, it has the feel, everything about it has the feel of being handmade. Everything's just crooked and not quite right. You can tell, you know, things that are machine made, they're all, the tolerances are nearly perfect. Got a beautiful edge on there, look at that. Boy, that whetstone does a job on that, doesn't it? It was, I didn't take it back any further than that because, you know, it was improperly ground before. There's no reason to. Well, uh, you know, as it sharpens over the years, it'll eventually work its way back there, but that asymmetrical angle on there. It's not because it was ground improperly. It's just because that the chisel is, is a little bit thicker on this end. It's just the way it was made. Yeah, so most likely a handmade tool. There I worked it back and got rid of that bevel on the back so we're perfectly flat up here. Finished everything with a thousand grit. Beautiful lines on that chisel. <laughs> it's just one of those things. You know, It's just one of those things when you hold it. It just makes your makes your heart beat fast. It does me anyway. I just love, love things like that. Just the beauty of this. And the, f made by people who use chisels. Made by a company that made tools to work. You know, compare this right here. Compare this to big box store chisel. Here we go. Well, half, two half inch chisels. What can you buy this for? Lowe's, Home Depot. 12 bucks, 15 bucks, plastic handle, thin, short, poor quality steel, stamped, not forged. I mean, what do we have in this? Garage sale find, eBay find, a dollar, two dollars. You know, ask yourself, which one would you rather have?
Really, which one would you rather have? That goes without saying, doesn't it? Beautiful. Just beautiful. On the back there, made the just a simple handle. Just straight back with a little bit of a, a bull nose on there so it's comfortable on the handle. The length is nice. You can tuck it in against your forearm to have a little bit of extra control. You know what? If you were a fine woodworker and you were doing really detailed stuff, this handle wouldn't be appropriate. It would be too long, wouldn't it? But for me, I, I wanted a, a small chisel for cleaning up tight little stuff on timber framing. And so I like, I wanted a longer handle. I think that the handle is in good proportion aesthetically to the chisel. Man, just love it. A lot of pleasure enjoying that. You young guys that are uh, constantly ask me, you know, how do you build up your tools? This is how you build up your tools. You know, it's a work of a lifetime. It's uh, going to garage sales and, and finding things. You know, the thrill of the hunt, there's re it's really fun to come across something like this, digging through a big box of tools, you know, marked 50 cents or 25 cents or a dollar and find something like this. This is a this is something that you can treasure. This is something that I will I mean which one are you going to leave outside? I mean really. Are you going to leave this one outside after you make a handle for it and 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 it passes through your loving hands? No. No, you're not you're not going to. This one maybe most likely. That's it. So the lathe, that was the first time I used the lathe and I'll tell you it took for me it took a uh a courageous heart. Uh, until I finally started to trust it. I wasn't sure what that <laughs> what was going to do. Is it the best lathe I've ever used? It is not. Um, but it worked. And it made this beautiful handle and, and and it worked. So thank you Thomas for that. And thank you for all of the tools. It seems like the majority of tools that I used on this project were gifts given. And here's one by subscribers. And I think about you every time I hold them and I use them and it just... Um, it means the world to me. So thank you, those mentioned and unmentioned. We'll see you guys on the, on the next video. You thought I forgot this, didn't you? Oh no. How about we just take a moment and listen? Pachabelli. When we find ourselves in the presence of genius, sometimes it's just best to not say anything and be quiet and learn. <laughs>